So Experience Builder provides a new way of creating web experiences uh, that are intended for the mobile phone, first and foremost, so for the mobile platform. Uh, you can very, and I know our audience have already expressed in our pre-event survey that there's a big push towards mobile and mobility forces. So, you know, you can just uh, use Experience Builder to set up an experience, uh, drag or drop a couple of widgets onto your experience, uh, set some attributes, push it out uh, to your, your audience, and it all comes together really, really quickly. Um, and the experience it creates works on you know, all of your mobile devices, your iPads, your iPhones, in portrait mode, landscape mode. You flip it around and, and it just flexes to however you're using your device. I think as well, it's, it's probably important to note we do design mobile first, but you can design experiences um, for you know, the desktop users as well. So if you're accessing in a browser uh, at, at your work computer, you can access the exact same experience. It's just going to look slightly different to what it might on your phone. Uh, I think Experience Builder is really cool, but we say experience quite a lot, and that can be a confusing term. So Wayne, how do we, how do we create an experience? What do you mean by an Experience? Yeah, fair call. I've, I've used the word experience a little yeah. bit too much there, haven't I? Um, but you know, let's kind of deliver it, okay? Let, let me explain it. So previously, um, there was Web App Builder. Uh, and it's, if you haven't already uh, read the blogs and read the information, Web App Builder has just been announced that it's going to be retired in 2024. Now, Web App Builder allowed us to build single page you know, or single applications that really didn't bring together multiple aspects of your business workflows. Um, and they were the standalone apps uh, that meant you know, basically had to switch between them to, to get your workflow done. Experience Builder is about bringing all of those together, uh, integrating your multiple applications into one to create a better experience so you know the, the, the tips in the name there isn't it uh, you know an experience at the end of the day let me put it this way is it's just another web page it's just a, another web app um, but you can include multiple sections you can include multiple widgets multiple data sources uh, you can have multiple pages all rolled into one and the aim is to just create a compelling web experience so hence the name Thanks for the explanation. No worries. Um, you did mention Web App Builder, and yeah, we do have a lot of users here. Um, Esri did announce this week that it is being retired, and there is a roadmap for that retirement that's available online on the blog posts. Um, you know, it's kind of being overtaken by more modern apps. Can you, Wayne, because I know that this is something you kind of get into the back, back end of things, yeah. can you explain how they're similar or how Experience Builder and Web App Builder are different? Is that going to be easier? All right. Well, I'm going to have to get a, a little bit technical, all right? Okay. So you know, bear with me. Um, Experience Builder is built on the ArcGIS JavaScript API 4.x version. Um, you know, compare that to, to Web App Builder, which was built on the, the 3.x version of the JavaScript API, which also, by the way, is being deprecated over the next year. Uh, now, what that means uh, is that, you know, You'll be, there'll be limited effort being put into Web App Builder and, and to updating it and providing you know, updates and new, comp new, comp new components to it. Um, it certainly, uh, Web App Builder won't be moving from 3.x to, to 4.0. Uh, so if, if you're with Web App Builder, over the coming 12 months, you're kind of going to be you know, locked into older technologies and approaches if you've, if you've picked Web App Builder. So, you know, that really it makes Experience Builder the perfect choice for any organization that's just starting, you know, building their, their applications, building web apps and web apps. Uh, if you haven't used Web App Builder in the past, you should, you know, really be thinking about hopping in with Experience Builder straight away. Uh, if you do have uh, apps that you, you've built in Web App Builder and you, you want to mo migrate to Experience Builder, um, make sure you, you book a meeting in, a, in you know, your slidos that'll pop up later on the screen later, because uh, we can certainly answer a whole bunch of technical questions and, and help you out there. And I'm pretty sure that we'll be touching on this topic again uh, in, the, in the afternoon sessions. But when I definitely understand the relevance of what you said, particularly with a breaking change release. So going from 3.x to 4.x um, and, you know, getting people to jump straight into it if they've never used it. But if I am an experienced web app builder user, what are your favorite features? Why would I move across to experience builder? All right. Um, there's a lot to love. Much of it's technical for me, but uh, I'll, I'll give you my favorite ones. Okay. okay. The first one is experience builder actually allows you to integrate both 2D and 3D content yeah. in the same experience, in the same application. And you, know, you can interact with both of them at the same time. Uh, that's something that you couldn't do in web app builder. You had to focus on one or the other. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Experience Builder uh, adds the notion of action triggers. 
Uh, and action triggers are, are really clever. They, they allow you to take one widget and an action that has been taken in one widget and let it flow onto other widgets. So as I think we're seeing on the screen right now, as you move around the, the actual you know, map itself, we actually see our imagery changing in the other things. And you can you know, maybe click on a chart or click on a, a drop-down list, and those actions affect the other widgets within your experience. So those are two really cool features that it, uh, I think make it a very compelling tool. Yeah, that's really awesome. Again, something else that I'm picking up is a lot of these workflows are being standardized across the entire platform. So yeah. this reminds me a lot of what you can do in ArcGIS Pro. Ready you know, you can have Pro. a 2D map, a 3D scene, link them together, and as you pan and zoom across your 2D map, your 3D scene will then update, you know, giving you a real-world yeah. depiction of your world. That's great. That's really great. I feel like on that same comparison to ArcGIS Pro, I feel like when we went from our map to our just pro there was kind of that migration period and you kind of mm -hmm. had to move across but that's happening again right we kind of got a lot of web app builder apps that are out mm -hmm. there and experienced builders now the new kid on the block and it's going to be this kind of interim period of mm -hmm. beginning to assess your your web app builder sites and, and transition them across to experience builder and look for me I, i'm essentially a bit of a laggard it took me a bit of time to move across to experience builder um I think for me there was an update mid to late last year in Experience Builder where the, the familiar templates that were in Web App Builder, so a foldable, dashboard, and billboard were my top three in Web App Builder. They're now available in ArcGIS Experience Builder, giving me that more kind of familiar starting point to get started with Experience Builder. So I, I highly recommend uh, getting started with Experience Builder, especially with the news this week. Yeah, and you know, for someone who hasn't used Web App Builder in the past, I think you know you should really jump in with Experience Builder you know, right now, especially since it's going to be uh, retired over the next 12 months. Um, if an organization needs a low-code or a no-code uh, solution for building web apps uh, and, and web pages, um, where you don't need to develop or maintain custom code or custom widgets, then again, Experience Builder is going to be for you. And uh, if, if your organization has already built multiple web ac applications, you sort of find yourself flicking between them to you know, get your workflow done, mm -hmm. um, then Experience Builder is also going to be for you as well. So you might want to have a look at a migration plan if you've got the, that kind of scenario. Yeah, I think as well, because it's a new app and it's, it's pretty appealing, you know, there's a lot of new users coming in, there's a lot of development that's going on behind the scenes. So the widgets that are released in, in all of the Experience Builder releases they're also improving all the time as well. So we have a lot more widgets out of the box in Experience Builder than we ever had with Web App Builder. Um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, there was an Arctis Online update. Um, so we got a new version of Experience Builder. And there were a few widgets in there that sort of dropped in that release that I think can be very, very useful. Um, the one I really like to see, and this is a, a kind of migration from Web App Builder, is the Add Data widget. So you can temporarily add data uh, new data sources into your app um, when you're already interacting it with it. So you're able to you know, bring in your own data sets, your own CSV files, and interact with those alongside whatever's been put into the app already. Um, another one is the, uh, the coordinates widget has been improved as well. So you're now able to display MDRS coordinates in the app as well, which is definitely key for some of our users here today. Uh, and another fairly niche one, but very important one, and Wayne, you'll be all over this mm -hmm. already, uh, the utility network trace widget is out of beta. So you couldn't do that in Web App Builder. Couldn't do that in Web App Builder. I think we've got some of our uh, utilities out there already using the utilities trace nice. network. Look, I'll add an extra bonus point for Experience Builder, actually. And this is something that's really you know, quite dear to my heart, and that's just web accessibility. Um, you know, organisations, government organisations, uh, any, any organisation in Australia that pu produces public facing content has a duty of care and, and actually a, a legal obligation these days to produce content that is accessible to people of all abilities. Um, and, you know, to do that isn't that easy. Uh, there's actually the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, which is essentially a list of 250-odd check items that you've got to go through to make sure that your content can be accessed by people with all, all abilities. Uh, and, you know, that can be really onerous and really difficult to go through. So the great news is for people who uh, find themselves in this situation, is experience builder experiences are already WCAG compliant straight out of the box. So that all comes straight out of what you do in experience builder. So if you're a government organization or an organization building public content uh, and you uh, haven't already, I suggest you have a look at experience builder because it's going to be a big time saver. Yeah, I think that, that out of the box accessibility yeah. is, is such a great capability and a real game changer because the amount of time that we sort of spend to make sure that our apps are compliant 
a lot of that hard work is, is sort of taking care for you now. Um, it is really important to build content that everyone can enjoy. Yeah. Um, now, Wayne, you, you sort of touched earlier on the code behind the scenes. I always do. You always do. We can't stop you. Um, so I will add while we're here today that um, if you're a partner or you're a developer, you can actually extend ArcGIS Experience Builder to build your own custom widgets and templates just as you would with Web App Builder. And back to the Web App Builder retirement, like um, Wayne, help me out here. Like, so if you've built widgets that have been done in Web App Builder, I'm assuming it's not just a copy and paste and recompile for Experience Builder. It's going to be a bit of rework to get those moved across. Yeah, sadly not. I mean, you know, Tara already expressed how the breaking change between version three and four of the API is yep. important in this change. Uh, so no, if you've got um, custom widgets that you've already built for Web App Builder, then they're not going to just come straight across into Experience Builder. You are going to need to rewrite them. Um, fortunately, the ArcGIS Experience Builder framework uses a much more modern approach to, to that, that web development. So rather than the old and kind of clunky you know, sort of dojo approaches to, uh, to uh, the development, uh, we're seeing modern web techniques come in, you know, React and TypeScript. So if you've already got a, a bit of a head start in React and TypeScript, those modern web development techniques, you're going to be very familiar with how you develop or, or make widgets within Experience Builder. Uh, and, you know, I'm also happy to talk more about, you know, anyone who needs widgets to be rebuilt, something we can provide as a service uh, if you're interested. So hit me up afterwards. I feel like Experience Builders have been a good one to kind of finish up on. This is our last yeah. part. Um, for me, it kind of brings everything we've talked about together. We've got the, what do we start with? Field maps and the data collection from your, essentially your sensor network of field crews that are collecting data in the field. They can be surfaced up through these Experience Builders or the experiences as you call them. Um, we talked about site scan, so those drone outputs and the 2D and 3D products that you create with site scan can again power uh, the, the experiences that you have here. Uh, velocity, we talked about velocity connecting to those real time feeds, um, you know, bringing those together. So in this instance with Snowy Hydro, maybe there's a bunch of noise quality or um, people movement data seeing that in the experience. And with Hub, we, I, I saw the City of Perth example scrolled down there, there was actually their 3D city information mm. model that was an ArcGIS experience. Click it and it takes you to a much more immersive application. And for me, as a GIS professional that really knows very little about React and TypeScript, TypeScript and that yeah, stuff, yeah. Um, I need this low-code solution, or even no-code solution, right? There's, I don't need to do any coding. No, you don't. Um, and you know, I, I think I'm going to have to concede, <laughs> Simon, that you know, as much as I love my code, I, I think I can see the day in the future where I'm going to actually put my tools down because oh, this yeah, is all so seamless. <laughs>